Let's explore this new excavation in search of the remains of the first mile of the Via Appia in the heart of Rome. We're in the shadow of the Baths of Caracalla. Here's an extraordinary excavation. You have the modern Via Appia, and then of course you have the Baths of Caracalla. In between, as you can see at the base of the Baths of Caracalla, there are tavernae, there are uh, shops. And here in this recent excavation, there's a revelation that there's another series of shops. This is an opportunity with this excavation to get down to the ancient levels. That means the archaeologists were seeking to hit about eight to nine meters beneath the modern street level. Now there's a lot of uh, water infiltration. You can actually hear the sound of the water. There's the uh, hose for the pump. And they get down to the Severan Hadrianic level. They do not get down to the original the Appia level of 312 BC. They get close, but they are able to then reveal the history of the shops along the Via Appia from the second century AD to the eventual uh, abandonment of those shops. Basically 500 years of use of shops finally collapse, finally uh, sections of spoliation and then ultimately a medieval road of the 10th century on top of some of the remains of the ruins of those shops. It's an extraordinary excavation by the superintendency of Rome. It's an extraordinary opportunity to show you uh, the remains, the excavations, and the new information that we have on this section of uh, the city of Imperial Rome along the Via Appia. Let's locate ourselves in Rome. We're in the 12th region, known as the Piscina Publica, and this is a place that was known for having a natural pool. We're in a valley between the Caelian Hill and the Aventine Hill. And ultimately, the great structure right here in antiquity is the Baza Caracalla, and the Via Appia ran right past it, that Via Appia going all the way back to 312 BC. Now here are the remains, the hulking ruins of the Baths of Caracalla, attributed to the Emperor Caracalla, and it's an area encompassing about 30 acres, beautifully decorated with mosaics, with statuary. It was a place for the public up to 10,000 bathers at a time. What an extraordinary monument. And it's all built on an artificial terrace. And in front of the entire complex, at a lower level, there were a series of shops. And we can see some of those shops, the remains of them, today just below the terrace of the Baza Caracalla. And in front of it, there was a road in antiquity, possibly the Via Nova, that we know from the ancient sources. But where was the Via Appia? It would be further out. So the investigations took place here. This is the excavation from 2018 to 2022. And on the occasion of a press conference and the culmination of the excavation, we can now explore this site. The Superintendente Speciale di Roma is in charge of the excavation. There are many fantastic archaeologists working on this project, as well as students and former students. And they presented this week the findings of this four-year excavation. And now we have the opportunity to explore, to take a site visit. It's one of my favorite things to do as an archaeologist. So let's descend into this active excavation site to learn more about the history of the Via Appia. In the shadow of the Basil Caracalla, we have an exciting new discovery. Here's an active dig site, special access, in the superintendency in Rome. And we can see the investigation of the earlier levels of the Via Appia. So we can descend several meters. This investigation wanted to go almost nine meters deep, but there's a lot of issues with water infiltration. The water table is so high now. So they got down about six meters down to the rain up Septemia Severus. The investigation will continue with core sampling into the water. It's still an extraordinary site with so many details about this portion of Rome 
along the Via Appia. We have nothing from the Republican period, we'll get that with the core sampling, but what we have here is the earliest dated structure of the excavation. We can also get another view of that same vaulting right here in the context of the shops ultimately abandoned. This is an incredible excavation and what you see here are the remains of shops, shops that are built in the Hadrianic period with a major phase in the Severan period. And then it's a matter of reutilizing these spaces all the way through until the abandonment in late, not even late antiquity, but into the seventh uh, and eighth centuries AD, an extraordinary excavation. You can hear the sound of the water because they have to keep on pumping the water. They get the water table. It affected the buildings here in antiquity from the Hadrianic to the Severan age, probably they've already had to lift up the pavement here along the Via Appia for these shops. And it continues and it's still an issue for the excavators today. As we look around the site, we see various levels of deposit, deposition of materials. Of course, we have late antique vaulting collapses. And finally, we have a series of later walls. Here we have a wall which shows as activity rebuilding of this wall in sections with reused brick and even marble bits from the 7th and 8th centuries AD. But here is the row that was found over top, dating to the 10th century. Of course, there's going to be a lot of activity here during the medieval period because the stones throw away. There's the Church of Saints Nereus et Achilleus dating to the 9th century. The press conference was an occasion to look at some of the most important artifacts that were discovered during the course of excavation. A real standout is the marble portrait head that was found in the area of the Severan era shops. You can see originally when it was discovered, it was quite waterlogged, it cleaned up very nicely. Also from the imperial period, we have pottery, we have amphorae, we have this oil lamp, we have part of a marble column, a game board, and game pieces. Now turning to the late antiquity and early medieval period, we have an extraordinary group of coins, some of the earliest minted by a pope, dating between 690 and 730. And then we have this bronze ring with a monogram that either refers to the name of Antonio or Antonino, dating to the 6th century. Excavations are always exciting, and you never know what you're going to discover until you dig. That's what makes archaeology so fascinating. So we don't get the full story of the early Via Appia as was intended by the excavators. But if you go over to Ancient Rome Live, you can learn so much of the history of the Via Appia, and you can take that journey from Rome, right here by the Circus Maximus, all the way down to Brindisi in eight unique episodes. Join me there on Ancient Rome Live.